Architectural Applications for Module 2. We're going to create this drawing of a floor plan and so I'm on my Module 2 from Oakton CAD and if we scroll down here we'll see this drawing. If we click on it you can see the drawing and we can print that out. To get started we'll need a title block so we'll click on this title block icon we'll say open and that will open up my architectural title block in AutoCAD. I'm going to select the model tab and I'm going to also make sure that I have enabled my menu bar across the top. I'm going to leave it set for show menu bar so I won't need to click on that. And I'm also going to see that I have my my settings down here at the bottom set to be polar, O snap, and dynamic. I'll start the drawing on the wall layer by selecting the line command, clicking on the screen, and tracking north and typing in 16 feet. Feet mark would be the apostrophe. I'll track to the right and I'll type in 18 feet. I'll track down and I'll type in 16 feet. Bring it back to the point of origin. Hit escape. The walls are six inches thick, so I'll use the offset command. I'll select offset. I'll hit the down arrow. It's set for through. I'll type in six. Let me try that again. I'll select offset. I'll type in six. Enter. I'll select the line to offset and the side. And it's a modal command, so it will stay in the offset command at six inches until I hit the escape key. So I'll hit the escape key once those lines have been created. And then I can either use trim or fill it with a radius of zero to corner these walls. And so I'll use trim. I'll hit enter to make everything a cutting line. And then I'll carefully select these lines right here to be trimmed. You can increase the magnification by turning the wheel on the mouse. You can push the wheel on the mouse to pan. Next thing that I'll do is I will set the door opening. And so the door opening is six inches from this top right hand corner, so I'll offset six. When you do offsetting in inches, you don't need to do the inch mark. And so I could just type six, or if you prefer to use the inch mark, you can hit the inch mark on your keyboard, hit enter, select the line, and then the side. Now in order to trim this, I'm going to need to extend it a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll click on it, I'll grab this grip, and I'll pull it until it hits the other line, then I'll hit escape twice, and then I'll use trim, hit enter to make everything a cutting line, and I'll trim this line. I didn't trim these other two lines yet because if I trim them, then I'll have to draw in more geometry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset three feet, And then I'm going to use trim. Trim, enter, select the line saw to trim. So there's the basic opening of my floor plan. Next thing that I'll do is I'll locate the table in the center of the drawing. And that table is located 7 feet 6 inches from the outside edges. So I'll offset 7 feet 6, enter, from this line here and from this line here. Then I will draw that line. And it looks like looks like it may be seven feet six inches from this inside wall line. It is. And from this inside wall line. So I think I'm off slightly. I'll just take those two out. And we'll draw a circle with a 72 inch diameter. So I'll type D for diameter. 72. Remember, if we don't type D for diameter or select diameter, it will do it in radius, and therefore we'll have to calculate half of the diameter. Next thing that I'll do is I will uh, take out these construction lines, and I will create this table over on the side here, and it's 84 by 24, and it's located 4 feet from the inside edge. So I'll offset 4 feet. And then I'll locate that by offsetting 84. 
It's about six inches from the wall. It doesn't say on the drawing. Uh, let's make it an even foot. Let's see what that looks like. And then we'll offset that 24. The um, edges are beveled with a two inch chamfer. So we'll select chamfer. I'll set the distance at two inches and two inches and then I will select these two edges right mouse click repeat right mouse click repeat right mouse click repeat next thing I'll do is to put the um, the chairs on and to do that um, I'm going to switch over to the furniture layer and I actually should have drawn these other two objects on the furniture layer to put other objects onto the furniture layer, what I can do, just going to hit escape here, is, is select it by clicking on it with a grip and then selecting the layer that I want it on. So I want it on the furniture layer and you'll see it turns blue. I'll select these geometries and then I'll also select the layer furniture. I'm going to insert the chairs by using something called Design Center. And so if I select the Insert tab and then I go to Design Center, I'll get this bar here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for some chairs um, let's take a look in the house designer under blocks and not not too much there let's try the home space planner and let's look at blocks and here we have a desk chair and so what I'll do is I'll click on that desk chair and I'll drag it into the drawing and then I'll close this and now you can see I've got a desk chair and what I can do is I can click on that desk chair put a grip on it and I can just kinda put it there by eye at the head of the table next thing that I'm gonna do once I have that chair located on the drawing is I'm gonna put it on the furniture layer there we go now it's on the furniture layer and I'm gonna make the furniture layer active I'm going to use something called an array to create the other five chairs around that. And so I'll use what's called a polar array. I'll select the chair, hit enter, select the center, and notice to get the center I have to touch the blue geometry for the circle. It asks me the uh, number of items, and the number of items that I'm going to have is going to be the total number of items, which will be six and then it asks me how much how much is the rotation angle or the angle to fill and so I'll say 360 and so those are my chairs and I will exit next thing that I'll do is to start dimensioning the drawing and so I'll switch over to the dimension layer and I'll go to my annotate tab and I'll start placing some of these dimensions I can place a dimension by selecting the dimension for linear and then selecting this endpoint and this endpoint here and I'll put out that four foot dimension then I can come back here to my linear dimension and I can dimension from the endpoint to the endpoint and you want to carefully select the endpoints for the for the table so that uh, you have a, a little bit of a gap you'll notice if you do it right it is possible to select the endpoints of the leader and you want to avoid doing that and so we'll also put in an overall dimension of 16 feet from outside wall to outside wall. We can put a center mark on this drawing. And then we can dimension to that to locate our table from this end point here to this interior wall, 9 feet 6 and we'll also do another dimension for an overall dimension like I said you want to be selective you want to make sure that you get the endpoints so you may have to zoom in a little bit get that at 18 feet I'm not going to put all the dimensions on I think you can get the idea as far as how to put those dimensions on we're going to need to put some um, some text on here and so I'm going to want to write 72 inch diameter here and what I'll do is I'll use a multi-line text and so I'll select that and then I'll make a little box right here inside that table 
I can type in uh, the word 72 inch diameter and then I can hit close the text editor and then I can take that and I can pull it a little bit so it's on one line I can grab this grip and I can relocate it here and we're good to go on that next thing that I'll do and I, I think my text height says six inches on the drawing if I click on it and then I double click on it it'll get me back into this multi-line text editor and I believe if I highlight it here I can then go and change this from four to six and um, in so doing I'm gonna have to reposition that again but text is much easier to work with than it used to be with this software it used to take quite a bit of work to get text on it to look right I'll also create another text note and this text is visibly smaller I'll put that in at uh, three inches and it's going to be 84 L X 24 D so again I'll go to my annotate tab I'll select multi-line text I'll zoom in. I'm going to be kind of careful so I don't get an O snap grabbing the endpoint. And I'll tweak this down to three inches. And then um, I will type in 84L space X space 24D. And I'll highlight that and then I'll set that to be center justification left center exit the text editor and so there I have my note and then um, it's a little hard to read on the PDF but this is a leader right here and this leader is going to say uh, 2 by 2 chamfer and so what I'll do is I'll grab my multi leader I'll select the start point for that and that's good right there I can then bring this out, click again, and click one more time, and it'll jump into the text editor, which I'll say 2 space x 2 space chamfer. And I'll close the text editor. There's a couple more dimensions that I can place on here. If I go to my dimension tab, I can place this dimension here across the bottom. I can locate the table I can locate my door opening Once we have our drawing dimensioned, we're going to go and, and place it onto the title block. I'll select the floor plan tab, and then I will double click in the viewport. I can push the wheel on the mouse and I can pan it. And then the idea is to get it to fit in here at a scale. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a scale. Let's try a quarter inch equals a foot. And that fits. Um, we could probably get that a little bit larger, but I think we'd have to. Um, change our dimensions to get them to fit on there which is not a problem I can go and I can kind of squeeze them up here a little bit once I have those those dimensions on there and I have my scale I'm gonna lock it by hitting this gold lock and then I'm gonna double click outside of the viewport and I can come in here and I can put my name on it by double clicking on it and this is CAD 116 and I can save the drawing so I'll say file save as and we'll save this to I'll save it to my desktop as exercise use your initials 2-2 so that's it for the architectural application. Save that drawing and drop it into the Dropbox.